Segalit nouns. Segalit nouns are a special form of noun in Hebrew, and in this module we'll look at what happens when you add, we'll look at what they are, and what happens when you add the plural endings. First of all, what are they? The definition of a segalit noun is that there's a stress on the first syllable. And let us, what I'm going to do here, and I'll do this as I move forward in other modules too, these represent root letters. Could be whatever they are, and stress on the first syllable. So there we are. Two, the second uh, definition of segalit nouns is that they have segol in one or both root letters. So if we have our stress there, it's either both of them or just one. It tends to be the second one. If it's just one. Maybe always. I can't think of a segalit that would have segol here and not here. The third one is really just an application. If if they have gutturals, then they will tend to have uh, patach. So again, stress in the first one with patach here and here. Okay. Let us look at some examples. Before I do that, correct that. There's my paintbrush. So, segalit nouns, stress on the first syllable. They have segals in one or both syllables, so one and two, or just two. And if they have gutturals, then they'll have patach. Let's look at some examples. Edits is an example. This is, I think, my favorite example word. Edits, at least based on frequency of usage. And the stress is here. Edits. So stress, two segals. That's the segalit. Melech. Me Melech means king. Stress in the first one, two segals. Definitely a segalit. What about Sefer? I think we've seen Sefer. Stress on the first syllable and a segal on the second. So that that's fine. That's a segalit noun. How about Kodesh? Kodesh. And again we have stress in the first syllable and we have a segal here. Now here we have a holum. That's okay, and here we have a tzede. As long as we have a segal over here in the second position. So, earth, king, book, holy, or holiness. And what happens with na'ar, which means young lad, here we have a guttural. Na'ar is spelt with two pataks, and stress in the first syllable. So it also is a segalit. Na'ar. The reason those are there are because of that that uh, guttural. Now, there are many different types. Let me just go back one second. So we have all these different types of segalits. Different vowels here in the beginning for many of them. But, fortunately, when you add the endings, the plural endings, male, male or female, they all go to the same form. And the form is this. Let me actually rewrite my little root letter symbols here. So e eh and e, eh. or we could have, as we saw, let's say that was a holum. We got stress in the first syllable all the way down, so just to keep that there. Holum, we saw one like that. Kodesh, we saw one that went. Uh, Sefer had a tzere there. Naar had two, two patachs. What happens when you go to the plural? You add the ending, and let me write my three root letters, or root letter placeholders again. What happens is the first vowel goes to a Shiva, 
and this goes to a comets. And your ending goes on here, either im or ot, right? And I'll do a circle for the ending. So regardless of what you start with, any of these, you end up with the same thing. I a im I a ot. So that's nice. Let's look at some examples of the ones we just did, or at least some of them. So melech becomes me la melachim e e melachim and sefer becomes se fa rim melachim sefarim plurals are the same. The vowel reduction, the vowel changes. I don't know if you want to call it reduction, but the vowel changes that occur as you add the endings are the same, regardless of what you started with. Na'ar, which is very different, really, to patax, uh, becomes ne a rim. So even the one with the guttural went the same thing, ne arim. Edits, remember edits? As these root letters. Now I'm going to not use the final form because I'm going to put an ending on. Let's put the ending on here. Uh, actually, edits is feminine. Be careful. Now, the only difference here is that this can't take a vocal, a simple vocal shiva, and so it has to take compound shiva. We've grown to expect that. So, aratzot. Edits becomes aratzot. But that's the only difference. The only difference is that because this can't take a simple shiva, it takes a compound shiva. Other than that, it's holding to the same pattern. They're all the same. Now, this looks like propitonic reduction, doesn't it? Propitonic reduction we had, if you remember, if you have a comet or a tsere in the propitonic position, that's two back from the from the tonic syllable, so in this position, then they would reduce to a shava, unless you had a guttural, in which case it would be a patak shava, or a chataf patak, or some sort of compound shava. So this looks similar, this looks like the result of propitonic reduction, but in fact it's not. Um, there's actually a lot more going on behind segalit nouns. We'll look at a little bit more of this later in a later module. I don't really want to get into all that right now, but understand for the moment that we have a special class of nouns called segolets. Stress on the first syllable, segol in one or both syllables, unless you have gutturals, in which case you have uh, patach, and they can produce, you can have different types, because you have these different initial vowels, but they all take they all reduce themselves, they all come down to the same sequence of vowels when you add the endings, either feminine, like oat, or masculine. So just know that for now. Know what they are and know that the, the plurals are simple, all the same form.